What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Today, we're going to be taking a look at data validation in a RESTful API, and we're gonna be using TypeScript, of course. Data validation is important so that whenever somebody sends data to your API, you can make sure that the data is what you expected it to be and not something malicious. Not only is data validation important for protecting you from malicious code, but it's also important to making your coding go faster, considering you'll know what your expected types are supposed to be. For our data validation routes, we're going to be using a third-party Node.js library called Joy, J-O-I. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I just call it Joy. This package is extremely powerful and streamlined to make it very easy to protect your routes. You can do it in a very rudimentary way, or you can set it up to do it the way that we're about to do it with TypeScript. For today's project, I have a very basic RESTful API. All it has is one route that I've named Joy. It's just a post route, and all it does is just return the data that you sent in your post request. So first, I'm gonna actually just run Nodemon here, and I have a program called Postman. This is a program I use to test RESTful API routes. And what I'm gonna do is actually post some data to the route to show you what happens right now, and then we're gonna add some validation to it and then test it again. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make a base, very basic post request, and I'm going to take the body here and change it to JSON. I'm just gonna add a username and password. I'm gonna make the username two characters and the password just one character for super simplicity. And then I'm gonna hit send to see what happens. You can see that the data is just returned to you as shown in the joy sample route function that you can see on the screen behind me. So now let's go ahead and add the data validation that you all came here to see. Go ahead and create a middleware folder inside of it, a joy.ts file. And then we're gonna copy and paste this out of our controller function because I want the imports and I also want this function call, but I'm gonna erase this and save it for later. So let's create our middleware function. We're going to export a const validate joy. We're gonna have one variable. It's gonna be called schema and it's gonna be of type object schema. And we're going to import this from joy in a minute. Next, we're gonna return async, and then I'm gonna paste in the route that I took out from before, and I'm gonna just modify it so that it returns async and then directly into the function, and just fix the syntax here, so it looks something like this. Now go to the top, import joy from joy, and then also from joy, we're going to import the object schema. So now that's what we need for the imports. Next, we're actually going to define the schema that we want for our sample route. So at the bottom of the file, you can go ahead and export a const schemas. And this is going to be just an object. And this object is going to have some key value pairs. In our case, it's just going to have the one definition. But for whatever you're using this for, this is where you're going to put them all. Inside of it, the data key is going to be a joy.object. Inside of the object is going to have an object, and this is where you're going to define your actual parameters. So I'm gonna define a username here, and it's gonna be of a joy.string as a function, dot alpha num as a function, dot min, let's say three as a function, max 15 as a function, and then a dot required. So we just did a lot here, so let's take a second to break this down. What's happening here is I'm telling Joy that I expect my username to be a string. It can be alphanumeric, which means numbers can be mixed into it. It's minimum three characters long, maximum 15 characters long, and it's required, which means that if I don't provide a username, this should fail. Joy provides you with a lot more options than just the ones I'm showing here, but I thought this would be a good example considering it came right from the Joy documentation. Next, let's add a password key, and we're gonna use regex in this one, just to show you some, some more things Joy can do and how powerful it is. So this will be a Joy string as well, but here do a dot pattern, and inside of it, make a new regex object, and then just pass in some regex for your password. The sample on the website is basically just any letters A to Z, both capital and non-capital, or zero to nine, and then it's gotta be at least three characters long with a maximum of 30. Make this required as well. And just like that, I've defined a schema for my username and password for my data sample route. 
So now inside of my validate joy function, let's add a try catch block. We're gonna await schema and then dot, and then we're gonna do valid async. And we're gonna pass in a request.body because that's where my data is. Then we're gonna add the next command from express. And inside of the error, we're gonna just log our error. And then we're gonna return a 422 with the error inside of our catch block. 422 stands for unprocessable entity, which just is a good representation of what we're doing here. You can put anything you want here, 500, 501. You can even make it something obscure to hide what's actually happening if you don't want the user to know. What this function is doing is just awaiting our async validation check. If it passes the check, then the request actually allows it to go through with the next function. If you don't call the next function, you'll never actually get to the controller that you want to go to. So I would say that this middleware is good enough for now. So in that case, let's go ahead and go to our joy file inside of our routes folder. And inside of our router.post, this is where we're going to add our middleware. So after the forward slash, we're going to add our validate joy function here, and you can see it auto completes for me. And we're going to pass on the inside our schemas dot data, because this is what I've defined for this specific route. That's all you need to insert the middleware. So I think this is good to go now. So if we go back to Postman after we run our server again, we should see some errors with the original data that we put in. So let's go try. So when I hit send, you can see that there's an error and the message is telling me that the username must be at least three characters long. So let's change that. I hit send and now it's telling me my password fails because it doesn't meet the minimum three character condition. So I'm going to put password one, two, three with an exclamation mark. And then you can see that that fails. And that's because the regex doesn't allow for the exclamation mark. So now when I hit send after taking it out, you can see that the data is returned to me. So now I know that that is working properly. Now let's go back to our schema and add one more parameter. Let's add a birth here, but we're going to just make this not required. So I can show you how to pass something optional. Make this birth here a joy number integer. Make the minimum, let's say 1900, and then the maximum 2022, which is the current year if you're watching this. And I don't add the required at the end. So now if I go back and test this again, it's still going to work because it's not required. So if I add a birth year here and enter a value underneath 1900, let's just make sure that it works. If I do 2023, it's going to say, it must be less than equal to 2022. And if I do 1899, I'll get a very similar error message saying that it's too low. So that's all you actually need to do to verify your variables using Joy. So now, because we're using TypeScript, let's clean up one more thing. You'll notice that when you hover over your data object here, it's telling you that's a joy.object schema of type any. But because we're using TypeScript, as a TypeScript user, we're pretty anal about these sort of things. So let's go ahead and define an interface for this. Inside of the new interfaces folder, make another file called joy.ts. And we're gonna define our interface by exporting an interface, ijoydata. It's gonna have three keys, a username that's a string, a password that's a string, and a birth year that's an optional number. Now, if I go back to my middleware, after my joy.object definition, I can add some chevrons and pass in a generic type. And that type is going to be my ijoy data. And now when you hover back over it, you'll see that it shows up. So if I hit send, you'll see that this doesn't affect me in any way. It still matches my schema. So what you can do now is actually go to your controller and you can define a variable. Let's call it const data. And this is going to be equal to your request.body. And here is where you can put as ijoy data. And the reason that you can do this is because you know once it's been through the schema validation that there's no way this could be anything else except for this object. So this is really helpful when you're programming large projects as you can already know what the type is coming into it and you don't have to guess what the request.body is because the request.body can appear as anything before you define it with a type like this. So inside of your return, you can just change everything to just say data I'm just going to add a console.log my data here just to show you that it's correct. And then when you go test it again, 
you'll see that when you bring up the terminal, that the username, password, and birth year are showing up as the object you expect it to. And just like that, that's how you protect a basic post request with Joy. Uh, it's not too hard, and the Joy documentation has countless ways for you to protect your data. I just showed you some very basic ones that you're probably going to encounter, but things like arrays you could take care of, things like regex are all built in. It's honestly amazing what that library can do. Thanks for tuning back in, guys. I hope you appreciated the video. If you did, like and subscribe. Or if you're feeling real generous, you can buy me a coffee so I can make you another video. Take it easy.